Hello and welcome to the second part of our series on running publicly available Gauss code. Last time we showed how to set up a project folder, run a program, and resolve the library not found and file not found errors. Today we will run the code which implements the tests for co-integration with two unknown structural breaks from Dr. Hatemi's 2008 paper in Empirical Economics. We will use a couple of variables from the famous Nelson Plosser dataset. We have saved the program and data in a folder named Hatemi under the Gauss Projects folder, which we created in the first video in this series. If you're not sure how to do that, go back and take a look at the first video. Let's start by looking at how this file is laid out. It's split into two main sections. The first part of the file, up to line 22, is responsible for loading data and calling the main procedure which in this case is literally called main. This is the section we will need to modify. The second section of the code contains all of the procedures that Dr. Hatemi wrote to compute the algorithm from his paper. The end command on line 22 is the line of demarcation between these two sections. Gauss will not run any commands located after the end statement, but it will still find the procedures, so they will be available for use by code in the first section. Let's take a look at this first section to see what it's doing. The action starts on line 9 with the load command. And this statement is going to look for a file named b22.txt in our current working directory. It's going to load the data that it finds in that file and then reshape the data to be a matrix with obs rows and var columns. We're going to have to change this line because our data is not in b22.txt and we don't want to have to specify the data size ahead of time like we see here with the obs and var. Our data is in a stata dataset named nelsonplosser.dta. The load d command allows us to load data from many different types of datasets, including stata datasets, and to specify the model variables by name. So we will use load d. But before we load our data, let's get a preview of our data set by double clicking it in the project folders window. Let's scroll to the right to see all of the variables. The yellow cells with dots contain missing values. We'll deal with those after loading the data. For this video, our dependent variable will be bond yield, which is the BND variable, and our independent variable will be the money supply, which is just M. Let's use the load D command to load our two variables into Z. Now we see that lines 15 and 16 are splitting up the variables that we just loaded from our data set. The intention of line 15 is to select all observations from the first column of Z. However, we have a problem because OBS has not yet been given a value. We could add a line setting OBS to be equal to the rows of Z that would be correct. However, we can replace the one colon obs with the dot operator. This is shorter and makes it clear that our intention is to load all the rows. We see the same problem in line 16 with the row range and also with the column range. For now, we can just change the column index to two because Z will have only two columns. The remaining lines create two variables, obs and n, which do not seem to be used, and then there is the call to main. We see that the only variables passed into main are y and x, which we've already created. So it looks like we are ready to run our code. But before we run our code, let's add an end command just before the call to main, and then run our code so we can verify that our data has been loaded correctly. We'll open z, y, and x in floating symbol editors, by clicking on them and using the Control e hotkey. As we mentioned earlier, the dots represent missing values. This code won't work if the data contains missing values, so we will have to remove them. The PACR command removes all rows in which any element contains a missing value. If we add PACR right after we load the data, the first 40 rows should be trimmed off, leaving us with a Z matrix that is 71 by 2. Now that we have confirmed that our data is correct, let's remove the end command that we added and run the full code. It looks like our code ran successfully, and here's our output. 
Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you to become more familiar with Gauss. Let us know what content you'd like to see. Post your comments and questions below.